Trammell. John Romero. Your referee, Harry Krauss. Fifteen rounds of boxing, ladies and gentlemen, for the World's Welterweight Championship. Introducing, in the white corner, wearing white trunks, weighing 147 pounds, from Buenos Aires, Argentina, the challenger, Jorge Fernandez. Fernandez! There's a band with him. And in the black corner, wearing black trunks, weighing 145 pounds, from New York City, the champion, Emil Griffith. Griffith! The eight count is in effect. The three knockdown ruling has been waived. You both lost it before you're familiar with the rules. When I tell you to break, I want you to step back and break clean. Are there any questions? Does he understand? Yeah. All right, shake hands now and come out fighting at the belt. They're wearing eight ounce gloves, scoring here in Nevada the five point must system, five points to the winner of a round. Four or less to a loser. In an even round, they each get five points. It is scheduled for 15 rounds. Round one, the champion, Emil Griffith. Black trunks, Jorge Fernandez in the white trunks. Both are good, capable fighters. Griffith has been a very good champion. Fernandez, you will note as it goes on, he's only 5'5", five, five, by the way, will do considerable bobbing and weaving and will lead with right hands. Griffith has a very potent left hook. It's probably his best punch. If either one of them has a tendency to cut, it is Fernandez. Both are getting away with right hand leads here in round one. Griffith is noted for his combinations. He intends to work short right uppercuts to the body as the bout goes on. First clinch, parted by referee Harry Krause. Griffith came in surprisingly light, I thought, in 145. He was 156 when he fought Denny Moyer, a welterweight in Tacoma. He won it, by the way. That is uh, last July. Fernandez right on the welterweight limit, 147. One minute to go in round one. Griffith fights more up on his toes, you'll notice. Fernandez is a flat-footed fighter. Likes to get that power in there. Fernandez, 10 seconds to go in round one. Why are we wearing these outfits? I thought. Saturday on ESPN Classic. Coming up to round two at the convention center in Las Vegas, Nevada. Jorge Fernandez on his feet. Challenger in the white trunks. Champion Emil Griffith in the black. Now 
Now Griffith has shifted to the left side, as you see. Both boys have quick hands. A couple of those punches. He's been warned by the referee. Although each would like to score a knockout, it's apparently apparent this early that they're pacing themselves to go the 15 if necessary. the Griffith very much. Griffith has uh, tremendous shoulders, by the way, if you get a, a look at them. He tapers down to his waist uh, like a triangle. The shoulders of a middle waist. Griffith getting away with a lead right hand and scoring. About 40 seconds remaining in round two. Managers Gil Clancy facing him and Howard Albert on the right hand side, leaning in a veteran and popular handler of fighters, Sid Martin. Griffith was born in the Virgin Islands February 3rd, 1938. He's just uh, 24 years old. On the other side of the ring, we've got the challenger Jorge Fernandez, who was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina, September 28th, 1935. And in his corner, his uh, co-manager, Jack Singer, is leaning in from the outside. Veteran and popular handler, Chicky Ferrara, swabbing the face. And there's another good handler of fighters, Teddy Bentham, over on the right-hand side. The other co-manager, Frankie Jacobs, is at the foot of the ring. Here we come to round three in Las Vegas. Griffith finished the second round very strong. Round three, scheduled for 15. Fernandez, the white trunks, Griffith and Black. Fernandez is having difficulty piercing uh, Griffith's guard to the body. Trying to get in there. Oh, 
That's our ringside camera you see there, leaning into the ring. It's a close-up shot. There's a shot from it. Fernandez body punches have been blocked on elbows or arms. One minute to go in round three. Krauss, the referee. Ten seconds to go in round three. Fernandez getting in a couple of good licks. What's cooking at Stouffer's? A whole menu of restaurant-inspired dishes. Corner Bistro Entrees from Stouffer's. Six delicious entrees like seafood scampi. Shrimp. There's the bell for round four. Champion Emil Griffith, the welterweight champion. Black trunk, Jorge Fernandez, the challenger in white. Scheduled for 15. Fernandez is uh, starting to press Griffith a little bit more than he has. came out of that clinch with a smile. He was off balance. Good counter punch by Griffith. Notice that Griffith has those gloves up pretty high now. That may leave the body exposed. Griffith has a little puffiness around the left eye, but they term a mouse. It's below it. About 45 seconds remaining. over. 
There's the bell ending round four. Many of the greats of show business are here tonight. There's Shecky Green on the end with Dale Robertson, Janet Blair, Juliet Prowse. Many of these are appearing here in Las Vegas. Tommy McDonald, Rosemary Clooney, Buddy Cole, and his daughter Tina Cole, who is going to be in Hawaiian Eye, I understand, on ABC. And there's Tommy Sands and his wife, Nancy Sinatra Sands. Uh, others, and, and back of uh, Janet Flair, I meant to say, uh, also uh, are two great comedians, Phil Ford and Mimi Hines. These are, uh, there's, there are uh, Phil and Mimi. Mimi's, <laughs> Mimi's worried about something. These are great boxing fans, these show business people. It's taking time out to be here tonight. We're coming up to round five, and... Uh, Fairly close bout for the welterweight championship. It is scheduled for 15. Emil Griffith, the black trunks. Jorge Fernandez in white. Griffith has been over the 15-round uh, journey twice and has won the fight. Fernandez lost his only 15-rounder to a middleweight in uh, Argentina. So if you're thinking about going the distance, Griffith has been there more times successfully. Harry Krause, the referee, dancing in and out. The, there is a puffiness below the left eye of uh, Emil Griffith, as we told you earlier. Griffith not quite as sharp in this round as he had been in some of the earlier ones. One minute to go in round five. Protect yourself at all times, but hey, don't turn your back. But uh, Griffith, the gentleman, didn't take advantage of him. It's been a rather methodical fight with some very hard punching but no continued exchanges. Ten seconds to go in round five. When I look back on everything, I see over 100 years of history 100 years of moments. Moments we say. Coming up to round six there in the convention center in Las Vegas. Emil Griffith, 145 pounds, the welterweight champion, his crown on the line in the black trunks. Challenger Jorge Fernandez, 147. Don't wrestle now, break clean. Harry Krause telling them to break clean. Fernandez brought out the drum again. Yeah. 
If it goes 15, condition is going to be so important. Two minutes left in this round. and slows a little bit here in round six. Griffith rolled pretty good with those punches. There's the bell ending round six. Why are we wearing these outfits? I thought we should practice our Irish step dancing to celebrate the St. Patrick's Day season. <laughs> here in Las Vegas. Fernandez, the white trunks, Griffith and black. Schedule for 15 rounds.
Fernandez subsequent holding and clinches convinces me that it was a real knockdown. Ten seconds to go in round seven. Hey, let's order a pizza. Make it a thing for us. You got it. Eight, white trunk. Emil Griffith, the champion in black. Scheduled for 15 rounds. The boys are beginning to unlimber. Could have been a big round for Griffith, the previous one, since the scoring is on a point system here, the five-point must. Fernandez here shows no ill effects from the previous round. There goes somebody's mouthpiece. I believe it's Fernandez. nearly over. There's the bell ending round eight. Behind every great champion, there's an even better story. Every month, join host Brian Kenny and Bert Sugar for Classic Ringside. Six Here's something of interest to all sports fans. Check this solid schedule of events coming up on ABC. The best in boxing every Saturday night. The best in bowling as Make That Spare follows the fight. Two exciting American Football League games tomorrow. Boston is at San Diego attempting to stay in contention for the Eastern Division title, and Denver is at Dallas. Next Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports will be in Los Angeles for the National Rodeo Championships. And it won't be long before you'll be watching all the Orange Bowl activity from Miami, Florida. In January, Challenge Golf, starring Arnold Palmer with Gary Player, makes its debut. All these events exclusively on ABC, America's number one network for sports. We'll have an interview with the winner of this fight when it's over. The 15-rounder, we're coming up to round nine. There has been one knockdown. Fernandez was down for a flash knockdown, took the mandatory eight count in the seventh round. Fernandez, the white trunk, stripper than black.
Jack Cuddy of the UP over there on the corner. Bill McCormick of NEA and Bob Myers of the Associated Press are also here. Solid right hand by Griffith. Fernandez smiling. Griffith isn't uh, giving Fernandez much breathing room in this round. But Fernandez had his back to us, so we are not sure. It could have been a solar plexus punch. The referee, however, did not do any counting. This would uh, be an, an ending that uh, nobody had figured on. Chairman Jim Deskin of the commission has told me that a fighter cannot win a fight on a low blow or a foul. Now, uh, whether the, his opponent can win on, uh, on a low blow, I don't know. I am not saying the punch was low. I, I say I didn't see it low. Whether or not Fernandez, there's Emil Griffith. The round had about a minute and a half to go. Jim Deskin has the rule book and is quoting it to the referee, Harry uh, Krause. That's Jim Deskin on the other side, if we can pick him up. Fernandez says, they're the uh, handlers. Teddy Bentham and uh, Chicky Ferrara are talking to Jim Deskin. They're Fernandez handlers, along with the referee, Harry Krause, while Dick Porter and the the uh, uh, announcer is in the background. Now the doctor has joined the act. <laughs> Meanwhile, Griffith keeps pacing around the ring. This has not happened. Uh, here comes Gil Clancy over to talk to Griffith. Apparently wants him to sit down. This is something we have not figured on. Now there's an argument between Gil Clancy and Teddy Bentham. Bentham has a towel over his shoulder. There's Frankie Jacobs uh, bending over. He's the co-manager of Fernandez. He also managed Tony Gennaro a few years ago. Fernandez is still down. And I, I question uh, very strongly whether or not he could continue. The John Doms are uh, trying to clear the space there away from the commission. I might take this no note here this time to make a note that it's, it's nice to see Commissioner John Gamick back in action. John was uh, in the hospital for a while. The other commissioners are Deskin, Jimmy Gay, Pat Brady, and Jack Tuck. The Nevada police are uh, keeping order. The crowd is trying to fit out. Fernandez now has his eyes closed. And he is in severe pain. There isn't any question about that. Now we 
Terry, a double-barreled activity. We have the doctor over Fernandez and uh, Fernandez handlers over the commission. And there is our uh, ringside uh, microphone in the ring on the shoulder of a stalwart ABC man. Oh, he got a pretty broad picture. Gil Clancy, the manager of uh, Griffith, is doing some gesticulating on the left. Something always happens. Dr. Donald Romeo and uh, Jack Singer, the manager, uh, Fernandez are uh, holding his trunks high so he can uh, breathe more easily. I would like to find out, if I could get a hold of the referee, whether he considers it a low blow. We may have another fight in the ring any moment. Now Howard, Howard Albert is getting his Irish up. He's the, the uh, other manager of uh, Emil Griffith. is being helped to his feet now. He's, he's in severe pain. And is holding his groin. We've just learned uh, from... This is going to be real controversial. We've learned from Dick Porter, the ring announcer, that referee Harry Krause has considered it a low blow. Now, Fernandez cannot win the fight on a foul, and it's a question in my mind whether he can lose it on a foul. That is the uh, cause of all the concern in there. We're going to have to get a complete ruling, and uh, the Dick Porter, the announcer, will, I'm sure, give the commission's ruling. Plus, these fighters were uh, very, very good protectors. There's a no foul rule also in New York, you know. They are supposed to uh, equip themselves with a protector that is good enough to withstand any punch. However, apparently that did not happen here. Fernandez is still in great pain. There isn't any question about that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dick Porter. It is a technical knockout. Griffith in a few moments.
We'll interview the winner in just a minute. Remember, ABC every Saturday night for the fight of the week. Here's referee Harry Krause. So we'll keep Harry here for a moment. Uh, just so that he can uh, explain the ruling. Would you please, Harry? Yes, uh, the rule states specifically that no fighter can win a fight on a low blow. The fact that Griffith was ahead on points, the commissioner has notified me, gives uh, Griffith the winner on a technical knockout decision. But you considered it a low blow? Definitely, the right hand to, to blow the belt, yes, sir. All right, thank you very much, Harry. Thank, thank you, you very much. Now the uh, well away champion, who seems to be a child of controversy, Emil Griffith, will you give us your version of what happened, Emil? Well, no, I'll tell you the truth. The fight was a very good fight until I threw a right uppercut at his belly. I know, I, I am sure I didn't hit him low. I am positive I didn't. I know I was doing pretty good, but I saw and I know I didn't hit him low. Because the puncher, he didn't throw the punch that hard anyway. Well, I guess we could settle this whole thing by having a return match. Here's Gil Clancy. Well, How about that, Gil? Yeah. Yes, Don, I think that uh, George fought a good fight, and uh, in time, he'll probably be in line for a return. I do feel that Emil was starting to get to George uh, in the last couple of rounds of the fight, and George was tiring anyhow. I don't think there would have been any question that Emil would have won anyway. All right, Gil. Thank you very much, Emil Griffith, and congratulations. Thank you very much, John. I want Gil to Clancy, thank Fred Martin, Howard Albert. Uh, I want to thank every one of the Thunderbirds for... A warm welcome and treat me nice over there. All right, Emil. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I want to get the doctor over here if I can. Doctor, Doctor Donald Romeo, can you tell us uh, if you can just uh, how badly hurt Fernandez was? Well, of course, we haven't had a chance to examine him closely. We can't do it out here in the middle of the ring, but it was definitely a low blow. We gave him a reasonable interval to recuperate, which uh, was five minutes, even more. And I asked him personally if he thought he could continue. Uh, he said uh, he couldn't fight anymore, so we had to call it off. All right, thank you very much, Doctor. Thank, thank you. you.